Live, another episode of The Oddest Couple with John A. Light. I'm Felix Levine. Before we get into today's episode, we are very, very excited to announce that we're going to be back on Patreon. I think that it's the time. We were on Patreon a couple years back for our most loyal and uh, I guess OG supporters, and it was a lot of fun. We had I remember live call-ins. It was a bunch of bonus episodes. Big community. Big community. And this time we want to do it even better. So by going to the link in the description of this video, we're also going to post this link everywhere on our Instagrams, every single social media platform, the oddest couple Patreon. You can also just search it directly there. Patreon's an amazing platform that basically is going to give you full access to our show and our community. And we're going to, there's going to be different tiers. Um, but join it's a small subscription fee a month i believe it starts at 7.99 or eight dollars and goes up to 15 or 25 depending on how much access you want we're gonna have bonus episodes content's gonna be dropped there early we're gonna have call-ins with members of our channel we're gonna have a community chat with other members we're gonna have direct email correspondence with john and i we're gonna have John answer questions in a personalized way um, that you might have, right? We've been talking a lot about in our last episode, Jeffrey Epstein, today it'll be Ghislaine Maxwell. So maybe you have a question at some point in time, John will answer it in a personalized way. We'll give you shout outs, a whole lot of stuff. Um, so we're very excited to, to have you know the Patreon back. I think it's really great value, um, great content. And so do me a favor, go subscribe to the Patreon right now. The link to do that is in the description of this video. Well, you know, for the people who also, so we, I can add to that is, there's so many people hitting me on social media, hitting us on YouTube, asking us questions. We had over 5,000 questions on our last video. It's impossible for us to answer them all. So when you're in that special unit of Patreon, we'll be able to get to you forefront for the people that are, uh, especially in that community. So we could try to answer, because we try to answer as much as we can, and people always ask me that question. There's just millions of people between the Instagrams, the Facebook pages, and some of our other social media and websites and stuff. So this is the best way to get you, your answers to you. And what, what's gonna be a lot of fun too is those caller shows that we did years back were a lot of fun. People would call into the shows, um, ask us questions directly. We'll also do for some of the VIP tiered patrons, um, Hop on a call with you sometimes, just John and I. Maybe we'll we'll sprinkle it in, or we'll we'll, we'll obviously let you know before we call you. Um, but it'll be fun. It'll be a great way for us to interact with you. And uh, there's a lot of really really loyal support out there, and we wanna we wanna give back in that sense. So, and make and make ourselves more accessible. So sign up to the Patreon. Anyways, today. One other thing. Thank you everybody that came out to the live show. Great success, sold out. And for the people that seen it, uh, spread the word, tell them it was really good to and, and actually speaking of, that live show is going to be on the Patreon. And on that live show, we talked to a former FBI agent. We talked to... He was up on stage. He was up on stage with us. We brought him as a guest. We had John's son as a guest. We had uh, a licensed therapist who uh, was trying to hit on the FBI agent uh, when she came up on... I mean, the whole she thing was, was amazing. It? She was. Ace? Oh, ah. so then maybe it was me trying to hit on her. Oh, well, the whole that. thing was just absolutely chaos. So you got to... <laughs> and my buddy was showed up. I haven't seen him since prison. We had a surprise. This, this is what John's talking about is one of John's inmates from jail showed up to the live show and John hadn't seen him in like probably 20, 25 years. And it was a beautiful moment. So all of that, 25. of that live show is going to be on our Patreon. If you're watching this right now, it's already there. So go subscribe right now. I promise you it's worth it. It was a beautiful event and we're going to be doing more, but stay tuned. And Eric Yancey, see you soon on the show. He'll be on. So today we just went a little bit viral uh, on our last video talking about Jeffrey Epstein and we got, first of all, I wanna thank people because that the support was overwhelming. I need to give a shout out to the 3,000 people who <laughs> gave me shit for not knowing who Noriega was. Don't worry, I did my research now. We're good, I mean, these people are fucking ruthless. He was in jail with, yeah. <laughs> in MCC Miami. We were the only ones on the floor, I told you. Yeah. People were ruthless, man. Ruthless in the comment section, but you know what we learned and uh, 
God. Well, it's and at the end of the day, fault. at the you end of the young. day, they're, they're watching the show. You're so, young, we, and, you know, me, I knew him already. Obviously, I was a big fan of Panama because my father yeah. was in Panama, and he was stationed there in the Navy. Plus, Noriega gave me two big books to read on him. I thought he was going to quiz me at the end of it, so I was a little nervous. <laughs> so I actually read them all. But funny. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, so this one's good. We wanted to follow up talking about Epstein. I think that there's a borderline worse criminal that's involved in that, and that's his little sidekick assistant, Ghislaine Maxwell. Well, Ghislaine, and this is where I'm going to talk about the mafia again and my upbringing in the street to what happened to Epstein and my belief he was murdered, and I believe it's only a matter of time before Maxwell's killed. Okay, so... And I could go further with Yeah, that. no, we will, and we will. So, I was reading up on Ghislaine today as well, the same way you were. I would even argue that she's borderline worse than Epstein. Well, she comes for the people who don't know. Her father was one of the uh, owners who bought the Daily News at one time. And he got involved in a scheme and uh, robbed about a half a billion dollars before he died. Suppose and, and you know the way he, did, you, did you read the way he died? It was like some, like maybe suicide, kind of suicide. She doesn't believe it was a suicide. And the two brothers and got the, indicted. Yeah, but they got they beat the cases. But I'll tell you something else, and I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna tell the people why I believe what I believe. There was a Ponzi scheme with Jeffrey Epstein years ago. His mentor, he was found in his apartment in Connecticut at 77 years old, dead for a week. His name was Stephen Hoffenberg. People don't talk about it because as a gangster, most of us always assume people are killed by guns. But everybody knows they do advertisements for BuzzFeed and some of their games. And I talk about different ways that an intelligent CIA and organizations like that, private contractors, know how to kill. It doesn't have to be by a gun only. It could be an injection. could be poison. could be arsenic. And it could be a million different types of suicide, car accidents, heart attacks. And when you see guys like Hoffenberg in his apartment for a week before they discovered him, something's wrong. You know, it, it, the guy's dead for a week, but let me take it a little further than that so people that don't know this. <laughs> We're getting it, conspiracy theory today. Oh, it's not a conspiracy theory. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> as, as a gangster, I understand certain things. People don't allow people out with information. Willie Boy Johnson was hit on the streets of Brooklyn after he decided not to talk years ago. And you just can't leave him out there because he has information that eventually could be, become potentially very, very dangerous to people. So they don't leave you out there with that kind of information. Same with Maxwell. They put her in a, in a suicide watch. She fought it. She couldn't look at her paperwork with her attorneys. She couldn't fight her case from Suicide Watch because they don't give you any kind of material. Wow. And she was writing out letters as much as she could prior and afterwards that she is not suicidal. And her lawyers wrote because she was so petrified of being killed also. Right. But now here's the good part. Jean-Luc Brunel was also involved and charged with pedophilia and sharing kids with Maxwell and Epstein. He was in jail in your country, in France, I, <laughs> where it does not happen. Yeah. And he was also found hung and uh, accused of, uh, it was determined suicide. Okay, so what's your conclusion? So, so it, it, and I'm now here's my conclusion for the people that understand the mafia and how I always talk about the, the relation to it. There was four guys that we had problems with years ago that plotted on killing me and some other things that they got involved in. One of them, a gang rape. They were four brother-in-laws, right? We don't kill them all at the same time because of the splash. You see when they have these mass shootings, there's a splash. But you kill them selectively. So the four guys, have, you, people heard us talk about them before, the shows about them. Johnny Gebbett, who's the gang rapist convicted, was killed by us. Georgie Grasso was killed by me on the on uh by Shea Stadium City Field. The third guy I shot was uh, Ricky Stratton in the head twice on the on the Interboro Parkway in Brooklyn. And the fourth guy was Bruce Cotterup, 
who was later on killed. These guys were killed in a span of about six to seven to eight years. You don't kill them all at once. They all got to go. We all know that they're going to eventually go. No different than what happened to Epstein, Brunel, Hoffenberg, and now Maxwell. They're slowly going, and she's going to so be So you think next. she's next? Oh, she's going. Like, what, what's the time frame, you think? If I, had, if I owned a life insurance company, insurance company, she wasn't getting life insurance yeah. from me. So uh, <laughs> I think what they're going to determine is maybe while she's in jail, she's going to get a disease somehow inject her with something she'll die whether she has a heart attack whether she's released whether she's released early when they get their hands on any kind of tapes or paperwork they think she has hidden somewhere because she claims she had them uh i think she'll have an accident no different let's listen no different than john f kennedy was killed by a bullet and his son had an accident in, in a plane did you did you read this new article two weeks ago that's been all over that um Ghislaine Maxwell fears retaliation in prison after snitching on two violent inmates. See, yeah, they're setting it up with small up, stories. Of course, they're going to set it up because if she dies, they're just going to say it happened like this. This happened. Listen, These are listen all to it. Listen to it. Ghislaine Maxwell is living in constant fear of brutal revenge beat down by two violent Cuban inmates who were thrown in solitary for four to seven, 47 days after she ratted them out for trying to extort her. <laughs> <laughs> The setup for kid. Listen, the, you know, it's coming <laughs> in the street. We used to say, and and again for people that understand, I'm always bringing a correlation of in the street. We used to say, when there's a guy that has trouble, leave him alone, because he's going to have trouble with this person, that person, that person, that person. So when you do kill him, nobody knows who killed him because so many people have issues with them. Right. No different than with her now. There's so many issues. And these conspiracies, or they could call it what they want, but they become factual because the odds of all these people dying of suicide, being in their house for a week, uh, we'll talk about the Clintons a little bit, and uh, Bill Gates, whose wife, you know, confirmed, and, and you know, during the divorce, ex-wife said that her husband was too pally with Epstein on the island. Uh, he had to step down as Microsoft uh, because it was a public company because of his infidelities and uh, some of the things he was being accused of. The Clintons, on the same hand, people would say what they want, and you could call her crooked Hillary and all this stuff, but at the Glenn end was of the at day... Glenn was at the wedding, was at Chelsea's wedding. Yes, <laughs> and, but here's the thing. There's 34 people directly and indirectly that have died around the Clinton family controversy. So when people say, to, is this... A, is this a, you know, uh, conspiracy. I don't know. Thirty-four people has got to be billions to one of odds that they're all dying somehow. Car accidents, brakes didn't work, off a cliff, drowning, heart attack, okay. hanging without you know a little help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think Ghislaine knows? Ghislaine knows everything. But like what? If you had to guess, she knows like uh, Prince Andrew. Oh yeah, fucking sick. She Fuck. knows the logs from the airplanes that were really on him and they were erased or torn. She has tapes because Epstein used to video and audio tape his guests. So those tapes are somewhere, whether they're in the hands of the CIA already or there's other copies of it that she has. But when you have a closed door session of a serious case like this with billionaires and the most powerful in our country, and they didn't let anything in. And if it's a conspiracy of a child porn uh, and a pedophile ring, where's the rest of the customers? Who are the guys they're giving these kids to? Who do these girls, who else did they see? It's not just the two of them. If it was the two of them, it wouldn't have been such a big story worldwide. What's going on? Why did the CIA director go to Epstein's house even afterwards when he already was in prison for pedophilia. What's their business with him? And he had excuses also. Well, I was a little naive for me. What are you talking about? Naive? <laughs> You're the CIA director. What are you doing with this guy that's already been convicted of a pedophilia? They gave him, I think the first yeah. one was a slap on arrest for a year and work release and he could come in and out. Oh yeah. So you don't watch the documentary? It was like a joke. It was like it was like a the guy could go in and out of jail. Like it was yeah, it yeah. was it was day camp. Yeah, and, and then but then afterwards, CIA is still hanging around him. Why? Why is Gates still hanging around this guy? 
And rightfully so, his, his wife divorced him and says, what's this guy doing with these children? You know, so these things aren't, this is proof, solid evidence, not hearsay. And when she's, when her trial came, why wasn't that in splash the news, say like what they're doing now with nonsense with Trump? Also, I hate to say this, but I think she has some intel on Trump too. Well, it, you know, listen, we don't I know. know, I know. We, we're, not, we're not gonna get political, I won't. I won't. Don't talk about Trump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, listen, they have uh, on the most powerful, supposedly, judges, law enforcement, government officials. You think they're all just pedophiles though? Or they're all just like... Who knows? I mean, because they don't, we don't, let, let's face, let's talk about, without being political, obviously, let's talk about our inner cities we always talk about. No one believes there's a fair justice system here. It's, anybody believes that is ridiculous because what goes on within our government now would be a RICO case that was a RICO case does <laughs> gangsters. We all got hit with RICO cases. These guys don't get hit with RICO cases. They're conspiring not to make, you know, thousands on a construction site, but they're conspiring to make millions, billions, and trillions with the way they're moving money with each other, inside trading, uh, uh, you know, initial offering prices. You know, these are these things, if it was any local, if it was the three of us, four of us in here, and we did it, trust me, we would get a 30, 40, 50 year sentence. I mean, Madoff got life. I know. So why isn't any of these other people in the government? That's why I always say there's gotta be, uh, who investigates the investigators? That's the problem. I mean, if we can open, hopefully, we'll put on our, our cloak and dagger hats. <laughs> And become like Sherlock Holmes and go after him. But listen, I don't think her life is worth too much, to be honest with you. I think she's she's not going to either make that 20 years and she's going to mysteriously die or something. Or as uh, soon as they get their hands on whatever they're looking for that she has put away in safekeeping. Well, it was also interesting. Did you take a look at all the like, um, f she, she was a major flight risk. Like well, she, she kept had hiding. She was always hiding. She had the French passport. Well, she had that, but also she had the UK. She also, but like when they were trying to arrest her, or talk like she was on. She was like, I don't want to say on the run, but. But do you know who her security was when she was living? She had all ex CIA. Well, they they found her, and they wait, wait. Did you, did you see how, hear how they found her? I'm gonna read that story. Hold on. It was like. It was in, I think, New Hampshire because it, she was it, in New Hampshire. it she buzzed was, on a, one of like her like burner she was phones on some or some uh, shit. Sixty acre estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, how does it work in the in the in the justice system when they determine how you're how bad like if you're a flight risk? Well, your flight risk is be for a lot of other things. What your record look like? What your violence look like? What your connections around the world? What's your status as far as she had dual status citizenships where France doesn't extradite back their citizens. So if she ever got out to France, she wasn't getting back here. So those are some of the reasons and, you know, some of the things that they structured it different with her. Were you, were you a flight risk when you got arrested? I guess so. I got caught with about six, eight, eight pass, six passports, two bum, bum ones. But, uh... At the time when I took off, I, I took off on a on a legal, I'm on, a, on a legal leg. Here I'm trying to hear. So it is. Maxwell faced persistent allegations of procuring and, and sexually trafficking underage girls for Epstein and others. Maxwell was arrested in Bradford, New Hampshire, by the FBI on July second, July 2020, through the use of an IMSI catcher stingray mobile phone tracking device on a phone used by her to call one of her lawyers. Well, you know, also when they try to, you know, find out about her financial status, she oh, said yeah. she was broke, but she actually married, uh, I forget the Scott guy's Burr. name. Scott Burr. Scott yeah. Burr, yeah. She something married like in 2016. So he uh, put, he has crazy he put money, all her yeah. money in trust and, you know, he sheltered it so they couldn't get near the money either. So, you know, listen, these guys are uh, playing at another level, but the, that level also is that money... Uh, I just don't think she's going to be around to, you know, I think people are naive to think that she's going to be around to spend it. It's, like I said, we do things on one level. These guys are on a, a, a level a, a 10 times tier higher than yeah, us. I know. To another extreme. And the access to the best equipment around, 
our best tools to murder around and kill. And uh, I mean, I never believe. Look at all the Kennedys that died. And do you really think that's coincidental? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what people are thinking about, but I mean, that bullet it hit about ten people. <laughs> and no, le legitimately, the bullet that hit. I'm talking about the president yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. And those papers should have been, you know, revealed at this time. But they can never because then it exposes the CIA for what they have done over the history of of this country. No different than the 51 fake signatures recently. So, you know, this is what goes on. How, what do you think the treatment is like for an inmate of that high profile like Ghislaine Maxwell? And I think she's in all, uh, it's, it's, is it maximum security? Or it's a low security, I think, in Tennessee. She just got moved. It, it, listen, the security levels in max or uh, an inmate to that degree that she's yeah. in, it, they, you know, there should be all kinds of watches on her. But they're gonna. There's gonna be a million excuses. Just you know, the, just what they just did. She has a, she has a serious problems with two, two inmates. Now, if she's in a max, I can understand that. If she's in a minimum, how serious could that problem be? There's nobody in a minimum that are coming going home that's looking to kill her in a minimum, so they don't go home. It's not gonna happen. I just that's like one in a trillion shot that that happens. So somebody set up terminologies of what's going to happen to Maxwell. I mean, the first thing initially, she knows herself and her law firm, her, her team of lawyers knew, and her husband, that they were spouting out on micro, you know, on microphones and what are those mega blasters saying, I'm not suicidal <laughs> because they're in panic mode knowing, okay, here's another one. He died in France. He died. Epstein died here. They're all suicide. Come on. And when people say, well, the people are conspiracy theorists. No, they're just realists. I says, this is not something that it's too far-fetched here. They want you to believe that because they have an agenda. What do you think the conversations, like the last conversations were like between Epstein and Maxwell? I always wonder that. Uh, she probably said, or he probably said, uh, we're fucked. And he probably <laughs> said, no, we already did that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, listen. They thought because of he collected so much information against so many important people mm -hmm. that he thought if he squeezed them, he's got them. But she has that same information. She probably has more information than he does. And everybody knows that. She got a sweetheart deal in 20 years. I mean, if you really think I about know. it, I'm, we're going to bring on uh, in our next show Oscar Lugo's uh, kids. He got 400 years for no violence. No bad crimes, sold drugs supposedly with no evidence of any kind of paraphernalia, anything in his possession. They gave him 440 years, the most, uh, more than Escobar, more than everybody. And this guy doesn't have no violence. So when you see that, what the situations are, and you see this, something's not right. How does she get 20 years? It's, it's impossible. R. Kelly got, I don't know how many years in Chicago, and he's all over the place. They're hitting him with cases all over. What do you think? What do you think the conversations like? Because you obviously spent years dealing with lawyers and the criminal system, criminal justice system. What do you think the lawyers are looking at, or what she's telling them? They also—I don't know if you saw that—they her lawyers sued her for unpaid fee, like nine hundred grand or eight hundred eighty grand of unpaid fees. Uh, who knows why she didn't pay? And they have the money. I, maybe it's something they're doing behind the scenes, so the government saying she doesn't have money. And, you know, they really, it's just something they're working together and they gave them the money in another way. Who, you know, I really don't know the underlying factors there with the attorneys, but it doesn't make sense that she's not paying them, you know, a, a million dollars to, to her and her husband right now. That, that, that's really nothing. I mean, people, you know, you could be, uh, to other people, a million dollars, obviously a lot of money, but to her and to, the, to her situation, her family situation, it's nothing. I don't think that's a concern of hers. Who knows why they're doing that and why they didn't pay. Maybe there's, there is something to it. I, I really don't think there's something to it. Okay, so if you had to predict how when she's, she's going to get killed, when and how she's going to die. Six years, five years. Within five or six years? Five years. It's a, it's a good rule of thumb with anything. When you say... I got problems on the street, and you tell somebody just last five years, and there's an overturn of people. People go to jail, people die, cops retire. So you look at a five year window. Same with her. The longer this goes by, and people forget about her, 
and they forget about Epstein and you know time time heals everything right so people just have short term memories of things in 5 years if she dies of a heart attack nobody will question it somebody injects her with something uh, and they nobody's going to do an autopsy if they do do the autopsy they're going to cover it just like they did with Epstein's all oh, the first one was without a doubt his neck was broken it was it was a murder the second one overthrows overturns it and they they say what they want but I wouldn't give her life too much expectancy to be coming back on the street and living a fruitful life. It's not happening. So okay, but what's your like official prediction of the method? The method you said five years. I did Buzzfeed, and at the time they accused Putin of killing his or trying to kill think lethal injection. And when we were poison. talking about it on a show, they asked me what would you do, and I says you I wouldn't use a gun. That's what everybody expects. So they said what would you? Some routines. Is does she drink coffee every morning? Does she drink uh, tea every morning? Does she do something that's on a regular basis? Does she take a medication? Give her the wrong medication where they kill her. Give her something if she has an allergy to something, give it to her where they kill her. Uh, when she's sleeping, inject her something in her throat and uh, cause her to die from uh, lack of oxygen. There's going to be a way to kill her, and it's not going to be from hanging. Uh, they're too intelligent for that. They have... Uh, experts that that work for this government that will make sure that she's found dead somehow. I don't you, give you them more than you, three to five years. You, actually, you think she's going to be in on it though, or it's going to be completely whenever the government decides? When the government decides, she's not going. She's going to be clueless. She's going to be, you know, the, she's going to listen. There's GHB for the people that don't know what GHB is. There's a powder form and there's a liquid form, and weightlifters used to use it to be in a deep REM sleep when they're working out so it cuts them up and they, they enhance their muscle growth. They can give a GHB in, in a large quantity and she'll die from that. I mean, there's a lot of different, that's just something I know about. They can have an arsenic or they can give you, like I said, they can give you some sort of injection that blows up your heart. They can pinch you with anything they feel like. She can go to for medical tests, like when every time you leave a jail, they make you take a, a TB shot. She, she gets shots all the time when you're going in and out of jail. Oh, right. If she's transferred. They can give her anything they want. Slow reacting. I mean, we're not scientists, but they are. They yeah. can give her something that maybe takes her six months to develop into a, a serious cancer and kill her. What do you think, like, the can she negotiate with the government? Like, what do you think the... She already did. That's why she only got 20 years. Right, but like... Behind what you, the scenes, don't think that wasn't already... Right, what do you... But what out. do you think... What do you, If you had to guess, what was the agreement? The agreement was she was going to shut her mouth, she was going to get to 20 years, and she was going to be okay when she came home. The same promise Willie Boy Johnson got. Shut your mouth, we're going to forgive you, don't make noise, let this go away, go to jail, do your time, we're not going to give you life, and you're going to be out in 16 years. But that's not going to happen. That's a wish, and you know, as a human being, people wish for the best, right? They want to believe the best. They want to lie to themselves and believe that they're going to get their life back. They're going to be okay. I'm going to come home. I'm going to be healthy. I'll have the rest of my life to live. I think she's uh, she was born in 61, so she's about you know 61 she, was, she is 61 old. now. Okay, so she'll be out when she's 74, around that. Maybe they, you know, they'll give her a couple of years. They'll tell her, you know, down the line, maybe we could get you something where we let you out a couple of years early. Who knows what they're telling her? But then, but in her mind, she's healthy. She'll get out in a couple of years, not a couple, but a decade or so. But that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I doubt it. What would I'll you? I bet the lottery on it. What would you tell her? What would you tell her if she was sitting where I'm sitting right now? Make out your will. <laughs> That's what I would tell her. And whatever you got with those tapes and that paperwork you got. You better, you better make sure it's in company of people that you really trust. And when that happens, make sure that's sent out everywhere. But, you know, even that, if she sent it out to the media, who knows what the media is doing now? Nobody trusts the media. So will they even play it? Will they, will their bosses that are running these companies like Murdoch's, are they in bed with these people? I wouldn't trust them. So, you know, she can't even get out the information she wants, even if she wants, because even if they aren't in bed with them, they're afraid for their own safety themselves. They won't want to release it. We're talking about a bullet that went through the back of Kennedy to this, and Osborne made the shot from that he can't make the shot. He's not good enough of a shot to make the shot. And then the bullet turned around and made a U-turn. 
And people are still <laughs> buying that nonsense when we know that's <laughs> obviously, and they just stick to it no matter what. That's the story. So the same here with Maxwell. They're going to stick to the story. And when she dies, they're going to say, ah, oh, crazy. She wasn't a young lady. Just like this guy, 77 years old, the Ponzi scheme. And they find him in his Connecticut apartment a, a week later. He didn't make no phone calls. Yeah. He didn't have no business. To think. He didn't have no family a week later. It, you know, the same in, 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 in France. Another guy that hung himself because he's Epstein's guy. And he was accused of uh, being involved in that ring. You know, because the guy probably the same thing had because he was animate. This guy of not having anything to do with it. Maybe he had the information. He's, he was threatening. He was going to give it up too. So of course, these people all got to disappear, just like in our lives. You know, people think it's only financial. No, you want to get rid of people that you think have information that can bury guys and and the the uh, organization. And if you're going to bury the organization, you're going to get killed. And the same with the them. Eventually, they know that they're not going to keep their mouth shut. They're going to tell somebody, or they're going to release information. They got to kill them. Yeah, they, they. I think they have. They just have to. I'm shocked that you know the the. But yeah, but is, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it too soon. No, it they couldn't do it too so, soon. So, so what you're saying about like the five six years, let things just kind of. You're going to let it smooth down. Something else will be more popular. Yeah. Something else is going to come up, and when other things come up, and there's a war, or there's this and that, and there's big news with different things, and uh, UFOs are coming down and attacking. <laughs> she's going to get killed. You know, when they can divert everybody's attention somewhere else, she's old news, and she's starting to become old news now actually you know we're speaking about it right, there's right. certain people speaking about it but every year that goes by she's old news there's somebody else that's coming in and they're going to talk about them but then when whenever this will happen it'll it'll be big news well it'll come out again but they'll try to drown it you know the least they're going to try to keep this slow i said something earlier that people got a question 34 people around the clintons have died <laughs> that's insane that's more hits than Paul Castellano put together and Gotti <laughs> as, a, as a team over their reign. 34 hits. So when I talk about who's the real gangsters, <laughs> sorry, the mafia loses hands down. This government and most governments, they're the gangsters. And, and they know how to play the game better than anybody. So... Make sure that you stop my car before I go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope they're not listening. Oh, they're listening. But it's so funny because... You remember that movie with uh, uh, Will Smith? Which one? I think it was State of Something. Uh, oh, um, fuck. Gene Hackman was in it. Older movie. Yeah. Anyway, they, they came up with a thing and they, they were right. And, and then all of a sudden, everybody's going after them. How good, like, from a... I guess from like a technical basis are these like government agents. I mean, you were you were like an organized crime agent, right? Hitman. How good? I mean, are they at that same level? Yeah, you got a lot of agents. Listen, the, the bosses, the red tape guys in DC, they're full of shit. They're bureaucrats. They don't know shit. These guys are just pencil pushers that are pushing a political agenda. The actual agents that hit the street or, you know, the undercover detectives and the DEA guys, they're rough and tough, man. They're all over the street, too. They know the street that, they, you know, if they didn't go that way, they could have went the other way. They know, they, you know, they really get it. You're not going to put nothing over there. You know, you're not putting no wool over their eyes either. They're sharp guys. A lot of these guys are very sharp, intelligent, educated, school educated. The difference between the educated agents that are on the street every day, the DEA guys, they're book smart too. Yeah, the guys on the street. You met a handful of them. Are pretty dumb. <laughs> you got listen. All of them combined you don't to an hundred IQ. Chemical class. <laughs> chemistry, <laughs> chemistry class. Chemistry, chemistry class. You won't even take. They're them gonna to do something. And blow themselves up. Yeah, you yeah. They're, they're not too bright, you know. So I mean, the joke was when the Philadelphia guys were talking about somebody did a hit. They didn't even know how to get home from when they did the hit. They lived there. They live in the neighborhood. They got lost. <laughs> so that's really the, the the basis of most of these guys. They're not too intelligent. And they're not capable of seeing in front of them. How much money do you think like a like a, a good agent makes? Uh, I mean, I think I, I don't know what they make at the beginning of their career. At the end of their career, they got to make well, two hundred. I would figure oh, two two fifty. Oh, uh, so I understand why people go well, to the street. Well, they get good benefits. And, uh, that's you know, true. They gotta, well, I'm just saying it's a high risk. 
it's a high risk. Position. Well, the ones that work. Yeah, the ones that There's work. Some lazy bastards yeah. too. You know, and I've seen some lazy ones, and I've seen some good ones. I mean, who was the best one you ever saw? The guy that was on stage with us the other yeah. day that we surprised him, and Jimmy Quinlan. Not your fault. Uh, but go watch that on Patreon, by the way. You know, some some of them are. Uh, you know, it's like anything else. It's the excitement of the job. You know, just like but we, that we, individual, we like the that individual the job, that like we that individual that we brought on stage. Uh, was he like? He was more. He was never like a hands-on. Yeah, these guys are hands-on. They, they put themselves out there, and they okay. they do. Uh, he's. It's not just him. He had a couple of people that he worked right, okay. with. One was a female, highly intelligent. They took down the city in cases. I mean, I don't know of anybody better than them over the years that everybody. But was I just worried mean more. About I just, they got attached to it. I just mean more like rough. Yeah, they they there's oh. they're laying on some serious cases too. I mean, whether it's uh, you know shooters or whether it's bank robbers or whether it's kicking the door in or something. Yeah, they've been they've got themselves in the, in some serious situations. I knew a a, a guy that I worked. Uh, Mike uh, Mike Powers was his name. He worked for me when I was in Brazil penitentiary, and uh, condolence to he lost some of his family members in some of the undercover stuff that he was doing. I mean, he was a intelligent, nice, hell of a nice guy, tough guy, and he was one of my private investigators for a while. And you know, when people say to him, like, you know, I know most guys are frauds. I'm talking about street guys. These guys are, are serious guys. Mm -hmm. They're putting themselves out there. I mean, he put himself out there with some serious organizations, and uh, and his and his family got killed for it. And uh, you know, he suffered a lot. And he went back out there and, and and hit the street again. Well, you got guys like you know I had John Tig on the show from Benghazi. Benghazi. I mean, this guy's not only after that people watched the movie version of it. I had conversation with him, plus he was on the show with me. He went back to Benghazi after that. These guys are incredible Crazy. war heroes. Who I talk about like Brian Basho in the past, a veteran, or JD, or you know Uncle uh, Uncle Steve, and these guys are tough guys that are actually contractors going out there, Marines. You know, really seeing a lot of action. So you got some sharp guys that really risk their lives out there for real. So I used to be a bookmaker. Everybody knows. Call in, and, and I'll what's, give you what's, the, line? what's the line. What's the line? What's the line? I give you the line on. This. All, right, all right, let me set. I'll set the line for you. Under under over four and a half years, I think straight pick them. If you, had, if, you had, if, you had, if you had to put 100,000. If I had to give it Under else, over four I'd and a half eight, years. I'd give them eight to one. Eight to one in their favor, she's going. In other words. In the next 20? Oh, she's going. I, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think she's going to I'm saying under over four and a half years. Oh. Uh, Straight pick them. I, I would say I would go a little under. I'd go to three years, I think. I don't think she's going to last that long. I think on the high end that it's going to be six years, but I see three years. I don't think she's making it to the street. Something's going to happen to her. They're going to say she Well, she died. still has, I think. I'm, oh, she got sick. She got this. She died of a disease. They took her out. I, I'm think. I'm feeling it's going to be a disease. Yeah, well, that's the most, that's easiest now. Yeah. With all these shots they're giving everybody. <laughs> yeah, you shoot her up with some. <laughs> you know, and uh, you, you're gone in six months, eight months. And, yeah, I uh, think so. Uh, if I was her, I would refuse every shot around. They put you in solitary if you do, but go take uh, not that I'm going to give her advice because I don't like what she did, but you know, obviously. I mean, I would even. I mean, I really, truly feel like she's perhaps worse than him. I mean, as as a woman to then set up young girls. Let's see. Well, it's like you know, you know what it's like to be a it, a young girl. Girls, boys, what they did. Who knows? You know, I talk about you know because we all have kids and grandkids, and well, you don't, but you know, other people that are old have kids and grandkids, and one of the biggest things you teach them is. When someone comes with a little dog and tries to get you to, to, to go with them because they have a puppy, or they come with another kid, they use another kid to get a kid, you can't go. You got to teach them. Or when a, a woman comes, because it's the soft touch with the dog or with the child to grab that kid. You know, people think it's just this big, ugly, fat guy that's coming, that's really sick looking, that's grabbing kids. That's not what happens. That's not even close to what happens. So, what's going on, like with the border, say, all these kids that are coming through. Where are they going? Nobody knows where 25,000 of these kids are. Where are they? Who's got them? What are they doing to these kids? You know, you know they're exploiting them. This is the bad part about some of this stuff, really. It's sad for what's going on and nobody to help them. 
and once they have them and they're using them and then they're drugging them and you know addicted them to things so they could control them it's over did you watch the epstein documentary on netflix it was like a four-part series a couple years ago you would like it yeah, yeah i don't know it was really that. interesting i mean it was just like it was so twisted the way that she would i mean they would come to the estate or the island and you know she would just like kind of explain to them like what Epstein well, yeah, I know a lot. Of, I, I listen to a lot of tapes, and I mean, it's just things. twisted. Like, I don't understand well, how a grown woman can tell a young girl that ever. Well, because you, you got know, a, like, a grown, a, a grown woman that these young girls have nothing. But what do you think her and motivation? Making them feel good. You get, you know, you're very pretty. You know, just rub his back. He likes it. Don't worry. He's going to help you with your, you know, educate. You know, he's tell him he's going to pay yeah, for know, their education he was going to buy him clothes they're going to have a future with him he's going to take care of him you know the, the usual manipulation brainwashing of a young mind that doesn't know any better and it's and looking for the stars what do you think her main motivation was purely money i think uh purely m money and i think he manipulated her also she's i don't want to use the victim but she's somewhat of she wanted to please him to keep herself in that lifestyle right and, and she status. thought if she couldn't please him and she couldn't do what he wanted he'd get rid of her too and i think she just was accustomed to that power the notoriety of the people he had around there i don't think it was just money itself i think it was the whole situation of some of the people that he kept in his company that she was privy to well he also i think they also had a relationship at some point 91 i yeah. think they started when they first met and uh they started you know they were you know people said that they really weren't like kissy feely kind of but they were always together and then she became the the the, the go-to that was running all his homes and businesses and he relied on her and she liked that he needed to rely on her because uh -huh. she wanted to stay in that style lifestyle yeah i just think you know she's she's sick too you know i mean she's sick and but she had a, a quality about it because she was very outspoken she was very well liked she had a good personality she was good looking she wasn't a small woman she was sl slender she was you know she groomed herself well she was tall so she had the ability also to impress these girls right, and right. these kids and girls guys whoever she was impressing because she had the ability and she came from a very wealthy background schools in oxford and and different things so it was easy for her to impress and for them to believe her right because she had it all mm. all right well <sighs> hit us up on patreon i know you're gonna have a lot of thousands you're gonna have a lot of questions so if you want if you want so if you want john to answer some personal questions patreon is the place we're gonna be having uh whether it's call-ins whether it's direct videos answering those questions um we'll have an email address that's specific for just john and i that you'll have access to depending on uh what subscription you get so it's it's gonna be a lot of fun um we really enjoyed doing it a couple years ago and now that we're back doing the show we wanted to get the show started first before we started the patreon and now is the right time so that live show is already up there we're gonna have bonus episodes every month we're gonna have a lot of different uh and for the people that need help out there really because i'm getting you know i know i get tons of messages now about changing your life and thanking me and i tell you if i change my life you could change your life it's never too late change your life do the right thing and uh you'll have a positive life and people that uh my friend jimmy uh that helped me along with my daughter that passed away from fentanyl and the people that are still struggling through that that fight will never end for any of us for me for from my friend jimmy and uh d gillen uh black poster child uh project uh all the work she does so i don't um, i don't want people to forget that and what's going on with fentanyl deaths in this country uh so uh any way that we could support you please uh hit us up with questions and again i apologize when people get mad and say you know you don't answer our questions there's so many there's so many people it's very hard and you know the patreon is something that you know it's for us we can answer you and i know there's money there and honestly to tell you the truth we you know we got to make a living also and i want to do it in a good way where we're helping people at the same time so it's a hard middle to do and there's a lot of people that reach out without that and they know i try to help as many as they can so uh, thank you everybody really in the support thank you